Are you ready to go five pounds down with a metabolism boosting workout for women over 50? Well, grab your dumbbells and let's go. All right, beautiful bees, let's go ahead and get started. Have your dumbbells completely out of the way and let's get warmed up with some arm circles with high knees. You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. And around here, we are all about making peace with your menopausal body by finding a healthy weight and moving in ways that feel like self-love. And you know what feels like self-love? Finding that healthy weight with the 5-0 method, where every single day we do five things that make you say, oh, I had no idea it could be this simple to lose weight at our age. Every single day, we eat the right number of calories, which is not necessarily less than you were eating before. Every single day we drink the right amount of water, which is half your body weight in pounds, in fluid ounces of water. Every single day we get the right amount of sleep by going to bed at the same time every night, getting up at the same time every morning, and not worrying about how much in between that was actual sleep, because sometimes it's not. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. Every single day we get the right amount of exercise, which is not necessarily more than you were doing before, and it usually is a beautiful, moderate workout like this one. My friends, every single day we do the most important thing of all, which is to say that we manage our minds by finding our thoughts and deciding if they're helpful. And the way you know whether or not a thought is helpful is how it makes you feel. If you feel good, that thought is getting you to your goal. If you feel really anything other than good, that thought is not helpful for getting you where you want to go. And I have a helpful thought for us today, which is a nice, I'm gonna call it a broad thought, meaning that you can use it in lots of situations, which is one of my favorite kinds of helpful thoughts, because then, then it doesn't have to be very specific to what we are doing just then. In fact, speaking of what we're doing, let's go ahead and do some welcome to my home. Guys, <laughs> welcome to my home. Blossom is very restless. I imagine she will be in and out of the room. I think you probably already saw her kind of wandering around in the background for a while too. I tried to ask her to join us today on the great chair, and she was like, yeah, no, no, thank you, not right now. Anyways, our helpful thought, really quickly is I can. Just that, nothing, no qualifier on the end of it, no specificity to it. And I love this one because it can be applied in so many situations. You guys, here, let me, let me tell you what we can do today. I've got a great Metcon for us today, which means metabolic conditioning, which really just means cardio and strength back to back with absolutely no rest. I've got the handy dandy gym boss here set for intervals of 20 seconds of cardio, 40 seconds of strength and nothing in between. Take your time though to transition between the exercises. There is nothing about this workout that we have to rush or hurry with. We've got another workout tomorrow, don't you worry. You guys, let's go ahead and get started with some letter K's. Hands up overhead. Your body is forming the letter K on this side and not the other side because, because that's the way we do things around here. Actually, actually, I was thinking about, about how I name these exercises. First of all, let me tell you that we're gonna grab the dumbbells when it beeps and we're gonna do bent over flies. Gonna stick your booty back out behind you just a little bit. You're gonna have your hands facing each other and then bringing your arms out so that your palms more or less face the ground. When it beeps again, we're actually coming back to those letter Ks. We're gonna do each pair of exercises two times in a row before moving on to the next thing. We're really thinking about going back and forth here between cardio and strength. It's a very different pace for each and we're always, always, always thinking about having excellent form and moving in ways that feel just right for you today, which today might be fast, might be slow, might be something in between. You can do anything you want. Here we come back to the letter case. I love this helpful thought. We have used it actually in a variety of situations over the course of this year. We have said things like, you know, I can have anything I want. I can figure it out. I can do, I don't remember what the other one was. I looked it up. I can not remember right now. <laughs> Here comes bent over flies for our second and final time. <laughs> The reason I love this particular helpful thought is because I find myself, like 
so much more frequently than I mean to or intend to, saying that I can't do something. By the way, when it beeps again, we're gonna put the dumbbells down and we're coming to our next pair of exercises and the cardio part is walking stars. We're gonna pick an apple and put it in our pocket, we're stepping forward, forward, back and tap. Hands go up and hands come back down while we're doing it. Of course, you're gonna have your core pulled in. Of course, you're gonna be thinking about excellent form and moving at a pace that feels just right for you. Here we go with walking stars, forward, forward, back and tap. When it beeps again, we're gonna pick up those dumbbells again and we're gonna just do plain old squats. Now I'm telling you this in such advanced time because I know that lots of you don't like squats, can't do squats. And I want you to know, technically speaking, you can do anything, but maybe you don't want to for lots of reasons. I mean, really physical reasons, like they're not very good for your knees, for you personally. By the way, squats are actually really good for your knees if you're doing them properly, but if you cannot, for one reason or another, your movement patterns have gone the way of not helping you with squats, then feel free to do any kind of kick you'd prefer. When it beeps again, of course, we're coming back to those walking stars for our second and final time, really thinking about moving at a strength pace when we're doing strength, as opposed to the cardio pace when we're doing cardio. You guys, I hear myself saying things like, I can't all the time, when what I might mean, here we go with walking stars, what I might mean is I don't want to, what I might mean is I'm worried that I'm not going to be very good at that, I might mean something along the lines of I've never done that before and it makes me nervous to think about doing something new, I might mean all manner of other things, here we come back to our squats for our second and final time, but the truth of it is always I can do whatever it is, I can, you can, you can. There are plenty of reasons why you might not want to. Some of them, some of them are physical, some of them are mental, some of them are worrisome, some of them are desire related. There are lots and lots of reasons why you might not do things, but when you tell yourself you can't, it really undermines your thinking about your capability. Would it beeps again, by the way? We're doing punch, punch, kick. We're gonna put those dumbbells down and we're coming back to our cardio pace. Punch, punch, kick. I really have to think about this. We're punching and punching and kicking, punching, punching and kicking, <laughs> going across your body. Whichever is the second hand to punch is the first leg to kick. And then we come back to that same hand and to punch again. In my mind, this means that we're going across your body. When it beeps right now, we're gonna go ahead and do deadlifts. Grab those dumbbells, pull in your core, straighten your back. You're thinking about pushing your booty back, 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 and then pulling your booty forward, 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 forward. This motion is absolutely guided by your hips. Thinking about where your hips are in space and time rather than your torso. If you are just bending over, there's a good chance that you are not getting this work in your glutes the way that it is intended. This is a butt exercise, and the way you do that is by using your butt. My friends, when it beeps again, we're coming back to that punch, punch, kick. <sighs> really thinking about using excellent form. And here we go with punch, punch, kick. Boom, boom, and kick. I noticed, I'm going to say somewhat recently, like probably within, within the past year, or so was when I really started noticing how often I was telling myself I can't do things when it beeps again. Of course, we're going to do those deadlifts again for the second and final time. And I hadn't honestly ever thought about it, like truly ever thought about it until I did, <laughs> which is pretty much how all of this mindset work goes. We don't think about the things that we're telling ourselves. We just don't think about that automatic voice in your head that's repeating something like, I can't. This was a thought I have had about so, so, so many things in my life that I've never recognized it as being unhelpful until I did. When it beeps again, you guys, we're doing pretzel tree jacks because pretzels grow on trees as of now. <laughs> the pretzel tree jack is my beautiful combo name because I couldn't decide between them and so I decided we're doing jumping jack with our arms and a tree pose with our lower body. <laughs> 
I couldn't decide between pretzel jacks, pretzel jacks and tree jacks, and so I just gave it both names because that's what I can do when it beeps again. We're doing three-point crunches. Going to grab those dumbbells, have elbows pointed out to the side, and then we're going to bring up one high knee at a time and bring those elbows in to bring those three points together. Really get yourself set in between. Really thinking about having your core pulled in by squeezing those elbows back. You are squeezing from the middle of your shoulder blades in your back. Weirdly, this is both an ab exercise here with the crunch and a back exercise when you open up those elbows when it beeps again. Of course, we're going to do those pretzel tree jacks for the second and final time. Awesome job. You can do this. You can modify this. You can do anything that feels best for you. Go ahead and put those dumbbells down and here we go with the pretzel tree jacks. Reminding yourself of your capability and your ability to choose. I think that's why I like this helpful thought so much is because it's not it's not saying I can do this thing that I have, you know, let's say physical limitations for. Here we go with those three point crunches for the second and final time. It's not, it's not lying to yourself about what you can do. It is reminding yourself that you can choose. You could choose anything you want rather than thinking of yourself as being powerless against certain limitations or certain dislikes. I'm actually even thinking about like, for example, I know, I know some of you will be deeply offended by this. By the way, when it beeps again, we're doing double knees. I don't like mushrooms. Like I just don't like them. I don't like to eat them. They don't taste good to me. And people really have strong opinions about mushrooms. I have noticed when I talk about this in public. So rather than thinking to myself, here we go with double knees, hands up overhead, Two knees lifted on one side and then two knees lifted on the other. When it beeps again, we're going to do peekaboo side steps. Another great exercise for your middle back. Always working on our full forward and back chain. You guys, when we do any kind of an exercise around here, I tell you what, I am always looking to get the most bang for our buck. Pull in your core, elbows at shoulder height. We're going to close those elbows. And then as we step to the side, we'll open them up. Feet together, hands together, or rather elbows together. Feet apart, elbows apart, stepping to the side, stepping together, stepping to the side, stepping together. Excellent job. When it beeps again, coming back to those double knees, <sighs> making sure you're breathing, making sure your core is pulled in. This exercise right here is why I chose to only do strength for 40 seconds. <laughs> instead of any longer because <laughs> I can do this exercise for longer. Here we go with double knees. But I choose to do things in a way that feels really good to me. I can eat mushrooms. I'm capable. I could put a mushroom in my mouth. I could chew it. I could swallow it. I could have this exact stinky face <laughs> expression <laughs> the entire time I'm doing it. I can eat mushrooms. Here we go with those peekaboo side steps for the second and final time. However, I choose not to. I can. I'm capable. I want you to really, really think about that when you are telling yourself. And I don't mean that you're telling yourself like consciously on purpose. This is why I told you the story to begin with, but I didn't realize how often I was saying it until I did. I'm pointing it out to you so you can notice how often you're saying it to yourself. When it beeps again, we're doing butter churns. I'm going to put these dumbbells down. Hands are going to face your body, starting at the bottom. And as they come up underneath your chin, nope, as they go down from your chin, that is when one leg comes out to the side. You can, honestly, do this exercise any way that feels good to you. With, if it happens that your hands are up when your foot is up, that's completely OK. You can do this exercise any way you want to. When it beeps again, we're doing a curtsy front punch. So it's, a, I'm going to call it a curtsy lunge, but honestly, I'm not coming down too deep of a lunge. It's a, it's a kickback. It's a step back and we're going to, or cross back. That's the word I was really trying to say the entire time. <laughs> And then we're going to do a front punch. Whatever you do with your legs, if you would prefer to kick, please prefer to kick. Remind yourself that you can modify, moderate, make this workout work for you. Rather than thinking, I can't about any, anything, anything ever. You can, but you'd probably be in pain. You can, but you'd injure yourself. So of course you're choosing not to. When you think about all the things that you can do, but would prefer not to. Here we come back to the butter churns. It feels so different 
than telling yourself you can't. And I really, this, this is the crux of everything we talk about, this brain-body connection. The brain thinks the thought, the body feels a feeling. And sometimes, sometimes we're not paying attention to that connection. Here we go with that curtsy front punch again. And so therefore, we continue thinking things with our brain that our body does not care for the feeling of. When you start tuning in to your body, lots of great things happen. First of all, first of all, you'll get better fitness gains. But second of all, you'll recognize when you're telling yourself something that isn't helpful. I'm going to beeps again. Oh my gosh. Okay. I really got to think about this one. This has been a very thinky workout for me today. We're doing letter C. That's the one where our hands are forming the letter C. We're going to do this a single-sided way because we are coming back and doing the pair of exercises twice. So we're going to make the letter C on one side, which I'm pointing that way because, because the letter C is when I am pointing to the kitchen where the cookies are. Do I have cookies right now? Oh, I do. My mom brought cookies over last week. I have some, I have some cookies in my freezer right now. And so the next time we do the letter C, it will be not the letter C. But we are pairing this with cross body crunches. Gonna grab those dumbbells again as we do. Elbows are out nice and wide. You're gonna reach your opposite elbow towards your opposite knee. Make it a nice crunch there in the middle and thinking about squeezing from the middle of your shoulder blades when those elbows are out nice and wide. It's a crunch for your front and then a squeeze for your back, working your front chain and your rear chain, getting a nice full body workout. You guys, I meant to tell you, in fact, I meant to have an entire conversation. We still got a couple more minutes, but I meant to have an entire conversation about how to boost your metabolism since I called this a metabolism boosting workout. And I want you to know that boosting your metabolism, here we go with those letter C's, the other direction. So this way and that way. Here we go. All right. Just takes me a second. You're good. I'm good. I can. I can be quite awkward when I'm doing these. We'll do those cross body crunches for the second and final time when it beeps again. The thing about boosting your metabolism is we don't just boost our metabolism from exercise. Opposite elbow to opposite knee. Excellent job. When it beeps again, we're going to do a reach across crunch. That's our cardio move for our next pair of exercises. Your metabolism, the word metabolism, honestly, I think it's somewhat misunderstood. We think about how we want to boost it. We want to rev it. And I will tell you that metabolism just means the efficiency with which your body is performing all of its processes. You always have a metabolism. I mean, from the minute you're born to the minute you are no longer on this earth, you always have a metabolism. And it is always, always, always reacting to all of your inputs. So we're going to reach across and crunch and reach across and crunch. This is our cardio move, but boy, oh boy, are we thinking about having excellent form when you've got your core pulled in using that brain body connection. We are forming all kinds of trust with ourselves to be able to find helpful thoughts and get nice and strong. Sumo X's is our next strength exercise. Feet almost uncomfortably wide. We come down in a sumo squat and then raise out to the letter X, really thinking about keeping that core pulled in tight while you've got your hands reaching up and out to the side. Excellent job. When it beeps again, we're doing that reach across crunch again. So if you think about your metabolism reacting, acting, behaving in accordance with all of your inputs, Really, truly, all of them. Everything you do affects and helps or hinders, sometimes, here we go with reach across crunch, your metabolism. Your metabolism, your body, is always, always, always trying to do its job and it's always trying to be efficient and it is always reacting to the inputs we have given it. Your body, your body will boost the metabolism, and here we go with those sumo X's for the second and final time, when you, for example, get a great night's sleep. Here we come down in a sumo squat and then up in the letter X, really thinking about having that core pulled in nice and tight. Your metabolism will be boosted when you are fully hydrated. Your metabolism will be boosted when you are eating the right number of calories. In fact, your metabolism has a very difficult time when you are not eating enough. You will boost your metabolism when you eat. I know, right? 
And, and this thing that we think of as metabolism boosting by doing exercise, sometimes, here we go with skiers, hands are going up and down in front of you, feet are shuffling forward and backwards underneath you. This is our last pair of exercises in our regular workout. When it beeps again, we're only gonna grab one dumbbell, we're gonna go overhead to high knees. We're gonna grab that dumbbell by the, by the long horns, one in each hand, and have it up overhead, pull in that core, Bring it down and bring up one high knee at the time. Really thinking about moving from your shoulder blades when the dumbbell is up overhead and squeezing, squeezing, squeezing from your core and squeezing those abs as it comes down to one high knee at a time. You are boosting your metabolism with exercise right up until you are not because you have over-exercised and your body has to start catabolizing your muscles for energy instead of operating efficiently. My friends, you are not only boosting your metabolism by exercising. Here we go with those skiers for the second and final time. The best way, in fact, to boost your metabolism is by doing all the things that we do with the FIFO method. You knew I was gonna tie that back around, right? When you are taking care of your body, taking care of all of your body's inputs that you actually have some control over. There's plenty of inputs we don't have control over. Focus on the ones that we do. Go ahead and grab that dumbbell and here we go with overhead to high knees. The fact of it is, the five things that I mentioned in the 5-0 method, food and water and sleep and exercise and mindset management, those are the things that we have the most control over, the most direction of in our lives. When it beeps again, by the way, we are done, but we're not quite finished. I have one more pair of exercises that is our built-in finisher. We're gonna do Drinky Bird Jacks for our cardio exercise here when it beeps again. Really thinking, who doggies about moving at a cardio pace, but also having your core pulled in nice and tight so that the balance work is part of what we're doing as opposed to not part of what we're doing. <laughs> Truly, when you move at a cardio pace, sometimes you can kind of fudge over the fact that your balance is not amazing but don't worry, we're gonna figure that out when we're doing the strength portion because of course the strength portion is Drinky Birds. We are gonna alternate back and forth. This is just one interval of Drinky Birds as a strength exercise. Probably only gonna get one or maybe two in on each side. We're really thinking about having that core pulled in nice and tight, back stays straight. Thinking about pulling that leg up behind you, keeping your hip even and pointed at the ground instead of letting that hip come up and out to the side the next time it beeps, you guys, is the last time it's going to beep. Oh my goodness, what a great job you've done. <sighs> Beautiful concentration. And that was it. Oh my goodness, what a fantastic workout. I'm gonna wait for this to turn off, there we go. And then I'm gonna put my dumbbells down. <sighs> and let's cool it down. My friends, I really hope that, well, I really hope that our conversation today was helpful for you, always, <laughs> always. I mean, I know, I know sometimes at the end of the workout, it's the endorphins talking, that felt amazing, thank you, Paula, and I totally appreciate that, but I also hope, I also hope that when I give you information about your metabolism and about your thoughts, that it's something that can help you, not just during this 20 minutes that we're together, but throughout your day, recognizing that your body is always, always, always working for you, and you can do anything you choose to do. You guys, you did such a great, great job on this one today. Thank you so much for working out with me. Let's open it up nice and wide. <sighs> and give yourself a big hug and a pat on your beautifully, moderately sweaty back. It was just right today. And recognize that doing more is not always better for your metabolism. Paying attention to your brain-body connection. What is your body telling you about the inputs that you're giving it, both mentally and physically, emotionally, all of the things. Paying attention to your brain-body connection is the way to get where you want to go. Thank you so, so, so much for working out with me today. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button before you go and I'll see you tomorrow.